We have already talked about the principles of study. That video described mostly the principles of uh, handling study material. But today I'm going to discuss 10 study strategies of students' behavior. All study styles can benefit from the approaches that will be discussed, but they are especially important for, develop for developing excuse me, intellectual capacity. If you are a careful subscriber, you will keep in mind that intellectual abilities require extensive practice and uh, are easily lost if they aren't used. We will go over 10 different aspects of learning, such as doing your homework and asking questions. Uh, and for each factor, we will take into account actions that result in success or failure. But keep in mind that following failing strategies all the time not only leads to zero results in study, but also ends up with degradation. So let's take a closer look at all of them. The first point is watching or listening to lectures. Failing students don't seem to take any notes and they appear to be easily distracted. Additionally, if they miss the lecture, they either forget to watch it or wait until the last minute. Uh, as a result, they either misunderstand or don't understand what the lecturer has said. Successful students always take notes and fix all the lecturer's recommendations. When something isn't clear, they simply research the subject further. More importantly, they refer to their notes while doing their homework. The second point is doing homework. Failing students do their homework and fits and starts. So they incorporate eating, entertainment and chores into it. As a result, their work is done carelessly. Successful students work every day at the same time. They have a plan, they give up destructive activities, disable notifications, managing apps, etc. Uh, for more focused work at home, there is also a life hack. Uh, try dressing up in a suit or your usual business casual attire. This way, your body will feel like it's not a time for entertainment. The third point is colleagues' homework. Here I mean the courses where all the participants have access to each other's homework. Failing students just ignore others' homework. They only pay attention to advice that is specifically directed at them. While experienced teachers, lecturers and trainers usually provide many additional helpful guidelines when they comment on individual homework. Successful students firstly fix all the mistakes made by colleagues to avoid them, say to say to learn from others' mistakes. And secondly, they carefully look uh, through the best homework of colleagues and try to learn from them as well. The next point is implementing recommendations. So, the trainer or the lecturer gives recommendations or even step-by-step -step algorithms for performing tasks. How do students follow them? Failing students ignore or mix steps because they don't fix them uh, or don't remember them. What is more, they are usually impulsive and do what they like and not what is needed. One more way for them to ignore recommendations is to imagine that it doesn't concern them. Successful students fix all the recommendations and follow them carefully. They have notes. So it's no problem for them to consult their notes and do exactly what is needed. This strategy seems very simple, though it's still very effective. The fifth point is secondary functions. What does it mean? These are functions that support your work, like managing software for taking notes, organizing your working place, organizing nice formatting of your documents, taking books from a library, and so on. So failing students just forget about secondary functions and never include them in their plans. But if these functions are not well organized beforehand, they will start to consume plenty of time in the future. For example, if you don't use heading formats in Google Docs, it will take a lot of time to change them afterward. Otherwise, all headings can be changed with a single mouse click. Another scenario is when failing students waste all their time on secondary functions and try to achieve a perfect layout of their documents at the expense of content. Successful students usually use simple and not time-consuming solutions for secondary functions. For example, they just choose the standard Apple Notes app instead of looking for a perfect note-taking system. In addition, they plan all secondary activities beforehand. It makes their plans more consistent. The next point is a reaction to neurosis. It happens when people face some difficulties. Just try to understand this simple mathematical proof on the screen. Was it easy for you? Or you felt uncomfortable? In study, you always face such situations, and different people react to them differently. Failing students fix their attention on neuroses. They are emotional at this moment, they worry too much and cannot think uh, in a constructive way because their biggest intention is to go back to their comfort zone no matter what. Successful students simply put their negative emotions aside and get things done. Uh, to calm their neurosis, uh, they employ various techniques. They can express their feelings and questions, or they can simply slow down or switch to another task for some time. 
Some students look for neurosis uh, intentionally because they know that the real development is an overcoming of such new and stressful situations. The seventh point is asking questions. Failing students ask three types of questions. Uh, speculative ones, like what's interesting to read. Oh, this question has a flaw uh, in that it doesn't attempt to address any issue or difficulty at all. Emotional questions like, I have so much to do and I only have little time left, is it only me? So the lecturer is not a psychotherapist, so the question should be more specific. The final group just expresses an opinion without making a request. For example, this book is a conspiracy theory. Successful students try to figure out the answer on their own. They look for information and, if they can't find it, they ask for assistance in solving a specific problem. As in, I'm looking for ergonomics books, this is the goal. I have tried queries like ergonomics, based ergonomic solutions, but still haven't found a good book. This is a description of what has already been done. And finally, the question pertaining to specific actions. How should I formulate queries to succeed? The next point is a fault reaction. Everybody makes mistakes, but the difference is in your reaction to them. Failing students respond by blaming outside factors and often justifications. They even can start to complain. Uh, one more failing strategy here is to point to another person and say something like, and he also made this mistake. Uh, there is one thing common in all these mistakes. Failing students can take responsibility. Successful students follow the opposite strategy. They take responsibility for their actions and decisions, and what's more, they wonder what was the cause of their mistake, and they try to eliminate it. Simply speaking, they make an effort to correct their mistakes and improve their working procedures. The next point is initiative or proactivity. Uh, failing students avoid any additional tasks. The minimum score just to puff is enough for them. <laughs> they believe uh, they can ignore the task if there is no punishment. Uh, this is a principle of minimal effort. Do as little as possible. Successful students are eager to do additional tasks because they know that the more practice you have, the better you get. They even provide new projects and publish their own articles, so they generate content without being pushed. The final, tenth point, is the leading principle of behavior. Selfish interest is the guiding principle of failing students. They are never helpful to their colleagues. Furthermore, they attempt to collect or rather steal as many results as possible in order to use them commercially. Such people can be identified simply by reading their chat messages. They, they frequently seek assistance and never assist others. They almost never even say thank you for the help. Instead, they say something like, great idea. Successful students emphasize teamwork. They contribute to the whole because they understand that the stronger your team or community is, the more beneficial it becomes to them personally. Let's make it clear. Successful students save everybody's time. They try to assist their classmates and the lecturer. They are always grateful for assistance and try to help in return. They share their results and enhance the opportunities of others. Certainly, not all communities are well organized to promote these successful strategies. We generate such stimuli in our communities, particularly when we assist all participants in the evaluated reading course. Regardless of whether you are in such a community or doing it all by yourself, follow the successful strategies and you will achieve the maximum results from your study. Check the additional information in the description below, watch other concentrated videos on the channel, and see you in the next video. Thanks!